at Ohio State. And Dustin May, of course, from Bloom, I mean, from Terre Haute, Indiana, where my mother is from. Oh. So it's a lot of connections here in this game. And I got one more from FAU as the game goes on. <laughs> You're all tied in here. We get <laughs> yes. it the way. AJ Desai, Brian Dorsey, Larry Scarotto are three officials. Clarence Armstrong, the standby official. First possession for Tennessee. Roche Plavcic puts one on the board. The seven-footer from Serbia. They've got massive length. Tennessee. Plavcic, 7-1. The biggest of them all. Here is Elijah Martin. This is what Florida Atlanta can do. And if they make their threes, they can make this a very difficult game for Tennessee. Well, two things. Plavcic. Two things happened over great. One, he scored one, and he didn't pick up an offensive foul like he did early in the Duke game. But then, quick offense for FAU allows him to get some spacing and open shots. And we saw it on the first possession by Martin. Inside, the Popchich once again taking on the big seven footer Golden. No, it gets his own. Popchich goes up, misses again. Golden with the rebound. Fort Atlantic is generally small, but. Golden, a seven-footer, turnover. Tennessee, relentless defensively. Josiah Jordan James peels it back. Vescovy gives it back to him in the corner. The lefty buries the triple. James with his first bucket. And Brian, how much with the length, especially on the perimeter for Tennessee's, we saw the tip pass resulting into a steal have an effect when FAU gets kind of boggled down in their half-court sets against this long athletic Bulls team. Here's Greenlee, kicks it. Back around the horn it goes. Point guard Boyd, no. Vescovy in there fighting for the rebound. Tennessee finished fourth in the SEC. Their seventh Sweet 16. The only win was 2010. They've never been to the Final Four. Vescovy, the southpaw, no, James, offensive rebound, in and out it goes, Golden clears. FAU won the Conference USA regular season and tournament. They've won nine straight, 33 wins, had a 20-game winning streak earlier in the season. Coming off their first two NCAA tournament wins ever in program history, just their second appearance. The Owls from Boca Raton. Late clock here, got to get one up. And Boyd, oh, oh Boyd finds a seam in there with the left hand. Nick Boyd, the freshman point guard. Again, dumping it down inside to Plopcic. And that little turnaround jump hook, that looks like it's all day right now. Well, the strategy, too, by going deep inside the paint, it helps control tempo, meaning that now the game slows down a little bit. You score. Tennessee can then set their defense. You're not playing against an Owls team that loves to get in transition. Extra pass. It's a foul away from the ball. Golden got blasted inside. And that was Mayshack with the foul. You see Boyd with the patience, the finish. Plopchek inside, a beautiful touch inside. <laughs> and a little <laughs> touch after. A little touch Just after. let him know he's there. And this, this one right here Ooh. to let him know that one. Oh, yeah. That's Viscovi. Viscovi. I mean, he, you can look at that, too, from an official perspective. And maybe Gene can talk about that because it's really not an action towards the basketball. Yeah, that was old school for us. We used to check big men coming down the lane mm -hmm. like that. But they've been, you know, taking that out of the game in regards to checking that way. Yeah, they did change that foul from Meshack to Vescovy. Yeah, Vescovy going and down. And then, you know, it's funny because Rick, Rick Barnes was talking about the Duke game, Tennessee beating Duke in the second round in Orlando as we get another foul here. So, Jemai Meshack picks up the foul. Vescovy and Meshack with fouls. Rick Barnes, I didn't think it was that physical of a game. It started physical. We had... A few moments there was some blood drawn, some aggressive fouling because overall it wasn't that physical of a game, he thought, compared to what they normally play, which is an interesting take. Florida Atlantic head coach Dusty May said they've been watching rugby film to get ready for Tennessee. 
Meshack, a superior defender, got to yes. handle that one. Forces a turnover. That's going to be a big matchup. Meshack, who's having to run the point guard right now, his skills on the defensive end unmatched in the SEC. Cabo can't connect. Escobie went for the steal. John L. Davis, man, he's got a great shot wow. fake, and he has James up off his feet. Gets his own board. Martin now drives it. Martin strong and couldn't pack it down, but he's fouled. Aggressive, taking it to the seven-footer from Serbia, Puroš Plopčić. But not afraid of the big fella. If you're going to go into traffic, this is how you got to try to finish with the dunk. Missed it, but got to the free throw line. Sweet 16 underway. We look at the tournament summary. Gonzaga, UCLA, they'll be matching up on CBS shortly from Las Vegas. Kansas State taking down Michigan State. UConn advancing over Arkansas as well. Send it over to Allie LaForce. Hello, Allie. Well, Brian, when Florida Atlantic coach Dusty May was asked about advancing to the Sweet 16 and his opponent, Tennessee, in his postgame presser on Sunday, he said he needs to study Australian rugby. And boy, <laughs> did that fire up these Tennessee players. Sure, Coach Barnes laughed and said, hey, I enjoy Australian rugby, by the way. But the players told me they took it as a direct jab and they will not be backing down. Kamwa told me as much as people want to call us a rugby team, we have the same approach every single game. So if they need to change their approach, that's on them. That's going to be laughed and told me, quote, I think it's funny. He said, we made an emphasis to play tougher against Duke, but it won't be that much different than how we play every single game. We are in for a physical battle. There's no doubt about that, guys. I love it, and I love the attack early by FAU off the dribble. I love the defensive nature being true to who you are through Tennessee. And give Duke a lot of credit because it wasn't the Duke contingency that was complaining. It was more writers and other people outside of their organizational program that had a lot to say about the physicality. Hot pass off the feet. Let's get the subs in here now. Both of these coaches use their bench liberally. Rosado and Gaffney enter for FAU and Dusty May. You've got Adu, Phillips, and Key on the floor now. Their first minutes on the floor. Both of these coaches will go nine, sometimes ten deep. They expect great defense, and FAU wants to run. Late clock here. Vescovy, long range. Three is cash money. This kid can shoot it. Santiago Vescovy from Uruguay. Tennessee up 10 to 6. First five minutes of this Sweet 16 matchup between FAU and the Volunteers. Down inside. This is Rosado. Giancarlo Rosado. Behind the back. Late clock again. Martin. Can't get Phillips off his feet. Scores on him. Strong move by Elijah Martin, one of their top players. He's got six already. But I love how he identified it in the middle of the court that he couldn't get there. But he waited. He was patient. And he utilized excellent footwork to reverse pivot off the glass. In the corner. In and out it goes. Tyreek Key, who could be a key for Tennessee as we roll through this game. Tennessee losing their starting point guard. And that's been a big story. Zakai Ziegler is out with an ACL injury. Best Coke ever? Take a taste and see for yourself. Tennessee able to get through what looked like the kind of loss that was going to take him out of postseason contention. Yeah. Just had ACL surgery Monday. He's in uniform. He's back on the bench cheering on his guys. Jimmy, he's the alpha, and Rick Barnes said, we didn't just lose a point guard, we lost our DNA. He set everything, he set the table for everybody. What you didn't see also defensively was the two steals that you're missing. Yeah. Deflections, impact, excellent ball movement that time by FAU, not able to get it. But because Tennessee was able to lean into their defense a lot more, allow their offense to come around and other players to get comfortable initiating the offense that kept them in play. It wasn't pretty at time, but effective. And it got up to this point right now where they're playing for a chance in the Elite Eight. See, they're one of the great defenders in the SEC and in the country. Again, it's Key in the corner. Other corner is good for him this time. Tyree Key, transfer from Indiana State. Scored 16 against Missouri in the SEC quarterfinal game. He can light the fuse. Man, that's going to be a turnover. Martin throws it out of bounds.
Well, this is this is a big basket for Tyree, uh, Tyree Key struggling in the first, you know, two NCAA games, only going five for 18, but more importantly, two for eight from three. But that time he didn't think about it, you know, kind of caught it in rhythm, felt confident. I'm sure the coaching staff and even his players said, listen, when you're open, you catch, you shoot, don't think about it. And that time able to capitalize. Jalen Gaffney fell down. That's why that pass ended up on the Tennessee bench and the Volunteers. Turn it over. from behind. FAU having trouble right now. This is what Tennessee does. They, as they say, bring the game into the mud. In their first two games, they beat Louisiana in round one, beat Duke in round two, held them both to their season low in scoring. That's out of bounds. Florida Atlantic will take over as a Tennessee turnover gives them the ball back. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament. It's on NCAA.com. The Owls with a program record 33 victories. Gaffney finds Golden inside. Missed it. And that's going the other way. Tennessee ball. I, I like that play, but the pass took Golden a little bit further away from the basket. If that pass could have been inside the key, he would have been able, Golden, to catch and finish that with his left hand, but it drug him out just a little bit outside of his comfort zone in an attempt to make that shot inside. James, it cleared out for him. Got a height advantage as he shoots one up and over Michael Forrest. Tennessee exploiting those mismatches. Went inside to Plopcic early a couple of times with success. Very balanced scoring attack. Biggest key for Tennessee, can they protect the basketball? Right now it is Florida Atlantic who is a little shaky with the ball. It's going to be a foul. Ooh, Jemiah Meshack picks up another foul here. Most wins in Division One. Right now the Cougars, one of the two one seeds remaining, sitting at 33. Florida Atlantic with 33 victories. victories. Jimmy, win or lose here tonight, this is going to be one of those teams they talk about for decades, putting Florida Atlantic on the map and a program that is moving to the American Athletic next season. Another turnover. Tennessee defense too much. And a hard foul as James hits the deck. A couple of free throws coming. What the, the length again of Tennessee to cause the deflection and then because it's a live ball turnover, your defense is not set for FAU now. The advantage goes towards Tennessee in transition. You have to be sure of the passes, use ball fakes in order to kind of go against what this length is going to present. You know, three field goals early for FAU and five turnovers. Mm. Yeah, two more turnovers than shots made. Hey, you can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device. NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. You, you were talking about FAU and season to remember. Just keep in mind, you got three sophomores, redshirt freshmen, and a junior that start out. I mean, so. I don't care what happens now. And they've been together. And they've been together. You, you're talking about building on something that has longevity. And then you recruit based on that success. You're able to build something that is sustaining. Hey, if they want to send an NCAA tournament game to Boca Raton, <laughs> we'll be all for it. We'll hit the beach. You uh, hit that in the golf course. <laughs> Tennessee, strong start. They're doing what they want to do. John L. Davis had the hot hand in the second round matchup against FDU and he gets one in. So John L. Davis with his first made basket. 25 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, five steals. First time ever in an NCAA tournament game. Stat stuffer. Key. Jump up real good. Weatherspoon. First minutes on the floor with the rebound. Weatherspoon not afraid. Yeah, look at Golden ripping down the rebound, and that's going to be a foul on Adu. Well, that's what FAU wants to see. Their big seven-footer from Russia mix it up. We're underway. Sweet 16, nine minutes into this one. This April, watch Masters Live on the CBS Sports app and streaming on Paramount Plus for coverage of featured groups Amen Corner and holes 15 and 16. Tennessee head coach Rick Barnes, what a career.
he has put together. 68 years of age, 36 years in coaching. Providence was stopped number two, then he went into the ACC at Clemson. His best run was with Kevin Durant on the Texas Longhorns, four-time coach of the year there, and been at Tennessee since 2015. Standing by a moment ago with Allie. Well, Coach, it's hard to criticize that start, but I know you will. What do you need to see in the next 11 minutes? I still think they've gotten a couple shots, wide open shots, that I know they're capable of making. I know they will make it. We don't clean it up a little bit. They're getting the ball down court quick on us. We've got to match up better, and we've got to make some layups. We've, we've had some point-blank shots that we've got to make. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, our thanks to Rick Barnes. Good job, Allie. Here is Boyd for three. And that's been flying high for the rebound. Golden. Lost the handle, second chance opportunity here for the Owls of Florida Atlantic. Well, Tennessee, they are all over it's the guards. Oh, yeah, nice shake right there, a little shake and bake from Brandon Weatherspoon. Tyreek Hill will run the point right now. Who has the ball in his hands is a big story for Tennessee throughout this game. James will do it, all their guards will share time. The freshman Julian Phillips cannot hit. Here goes Elijah Martin. And a pass deflected by James. FAU turns it over again, Jimmy. That was active hands that time. Martin got a little parry. And six turnovers early. Again, you got to be able to pump fake, get the arms down, and be able to have clear passing lanes. Olivier Kamel not getting a lot of touches early here. Key left wide open. Missed it. One and done. Three box out by Golden. Live inside. And Kamel, you know, he, he's going to get his looks, but I think the scouting report is saying that, you know, try to deny him some open early opportunities, being that he's, you know, tied his career high with 27 in the last game. James gets the Martin assignment. Davis left open. Davis can't hit a three. Key with a rebound. Tennessee, they will want to run if they can. It's very much an offense-defense setup. They do such great work on the defensive end. They do get a lot of turnovers. Leads to some easy buckets. Dusty May talking about his team. It's important for Florida Atlantic to be mindful of the breakout. Ooh, James from the logo. Everybody wants to shoot from the logo. Comes up empty, low percentage shots. Boy, can't turn the corner. Dusty May has got four players soon to be checking in here. Golden working from the middle. Oh, Golden, and he wrapped Sorry. that elbow. It's going to be a travel. Advanced stats presented by Invesco QQQ. Check this out, Jimmy. Points per possession defensively. Rick Barnes team, 0.77. That is second only to the Houston Cougars, and that is through a rugged schedule in the SEC. The, the key to a really good defensive team is one, you take care of your own man. One, you guard the ball, you don't get beat off the dribble as much. And I know it's impossible with some of the talented players in the SEC, but if then the back line has to provide help and you have to shrink the court. And that's what Tennessee has done extremely well all year. Kamala misses. Tough start for Kamala. He's 0 for 2. He had a big game. Against Duke, 29. Look at Plopchich going to work. Plopchich flexing his muscles inside. A chance at a three-point play. Well, it's not rocket science. If you have the advantage inside, whether that's Plopchich inside or you have your guards that have, you know, are taller and longer and more physical, you go to that. And we've seen early in this game that the ball is going to be centered inside. At that time, John L. Davis reached right at the end thinking that he could get the ball away, but... Plavich a little bit too strong, too big. That one's a little too short on that shot. Giving him some offense. He only took one shot against Duke, did Plavich. He was tough on Kyle Filipowski of the Blue Devils, though. Tennessee, the four seed, taken down Duke. Here's James Springs free. Met at the rim. Rosado turns him away. John L. Davis. And yeah, that's going to be an offensive foul going the other way. Olivier Kamwa standing in there tough. And that's the part I'm talking about one on one defense, taking up the challenge. Olivier Kamwa right there, able to slide his feet, anticipate the baseline, drive, and then get there in time, put his body in place, and pick up a crucial second foul mm. on John L. Davis. 
Davis with a 29 point round two performance against FDU. Tennessee by seven, go under eight minutes. First half, again, dumping it down. Rosado with the big body on Plastic. Oh. oh, nice fake, and he lays it in. Oh, they called Tim Duncan the big fundamental. <laughs> Plopchit's got a little bit of that going right now. Yeah, that was excellent footwork, anticipation on what Rosado was going to do with that little pump fake. Inside, strong finish. Giancarlo Rosado. They got two big men, Florida Atlantic. Golden, the seven footer who sits. And then Rosado, and they are very different players. Well, Rosado is more like the former teammate of mine, and they all say it, which is Boris Diaz. The ability for him to do a little bit of everything at 6-9 to defend, to pass, to score. You saw it on that last play. He's calling for it right now. Dusty May tells him to go quarterback oh. this thing. Get double stuck dribble. underneath and a double dribble. And that'll be another FAU turnover. Nine turnovers here as we go under seven minutes in this first half. Sweet 16 from Madison Square Garden. Our game summary, that turnover story is a big one right now. Tennessee leads it by seven, forcing nine turnovers, scoring nine points off those turnovers as well. As well. Dusty May, small town Indiana kid, lived a dream. He was Bob Knight's student manager. Bob Knight doesn't pose with the manager, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Moment ago, Dusty May with Allie LaForce. Coach, where are the turnovers coming from and how do you avoid them? We're trying to play over the top on the pick and roll. We got to hit the pockets and then spray it out opposite. We're not getting great movement either. The ball's staying on one side. Offensively, where do you start closing this gap? Taking care of the basketball, get out transition. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Program changing team. His first head coaching job, he was an assistant at Florida, was Dusty May. His name starting to circulate. Mm -hmm. A lot of rumors going around as uh, the coaching carousel at uh, some of the power conferences open up but he's done a great job here 99 wins most in school history in his fifth season and he's got his owls in the sweet 16 let's see about the adjustment now there were the nine turnovers you think about this Tennessee has 21 shot attempts at the U15 cut those turnovers in half count those as maybe some shots at the rim Kansas State beat Michigan State on this floor an epic overtime Victory for Kansas State. And they await the winner of this one. Mescovy on the drive. Little turnaround. He's got a lot of sauce. Not there. Weatherspoon the rebound. Weatherspoon's come on giving him some life. Yeah, excellent defense. Now you can get out in transition. Right there. Now you're able to see what you can do. And that's the thing. If you can stop Tennessee from scoring, you finish your defense on the rebounding side. Now you can get out and run, and you're not playing against the set Tennessee staunch defense able to score on that possession. Boy, the red shirt freshman known as the most vocal player they have. They put Greenlee, their best defender, on Vescovy now. They do. Guarded by Rosado. James. Six to shoot. Josiah Jordan James elevates, comes up short. Gets his own. Another offensive rebound. Tennessee size had an effect on both ends. Adu, offensive board, is fouled and won. Jonas Adu to the line for a chance at a three-point trip. Well, the pursuit of the offensive rebound with the size is challenging. Right now, we see it early on. That is the sixth offensive rebound. Grant Williams of the Boston Celtics enjoying that. Well, he was a part of a, a classic NCAA tournament run. Eventually a loss to Purdue, but an incredible run for Grant Williams and company. How about the career he's carved out, not nice. knowing what position he would play in the NBA. But young men like that that have a skill set to play hard, play defense, yeah. have a high IQ, they figure out ways to make themselves valuable at the next level. Hence, nice little deal, little <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. We got paid a little bit. Professional coaches, scouts, yep. general managers, they love Rick Barnes and the Tennessee program. They know these players are going to come out ready to play D at the next level. Late clock again, relentless pressure. Step back from Gaffney, comes up short. There is no room to work for Florida Atlantic right now. Approaching the five minute mark. 
Martin and Golden set to check back in. Rick Barnes content with the five on the floor. Vescovy has got a quick release. He's got to honor that. Meshack. Meshack will pull up. Long two, no good. Uh -oh. Big offensive rebound. Lost the handle though, James. And here comes Greenlee. Brian Greenlee. That's a tough defender on him. Not many point guards that can get by Meshack. Rosado back his way down. Trying to score it through a double team. No chance. Adu with the block. Yeah. Really good defensive discipline by Adu not to reach down, not to try to slap at it, just use his length to take away that shot from Rosado. Meshack at the controls. Here's Key now. Gives it right back. See if both teams working a lot of clock here. Meshack on the tape. Cut off. Pull up. Got it. Sweet stroke right there by Jemai Meshack. Scored just two points against Duke in the round two matchup. Those came from the free throw line. Only put up two shots. Missed them both. Well, this team shoots Tennessee 33% from the three-point line. But they're accustomed to making tough twos. And you saw that right there with Meshack on that pull up, even with defense right there in front of his face. This game going exactly how Tennessee wants it. Another late clock scenario. Gaffney. And Forrest cans a three. That's a big shot into the shot clock. Michael Forrest coming off the bench, knocking down his first triple and his first field goal. Vescovy drives, leaves it. What a pass. And Adu is fouled. Vescovy got eyes in the back of his head. Timeout on the floor. This is going to be some intense defensive struggle. Low scoring affair. Sweet 16, Tennessee and Florida Atlantic. Glad you're with us. Madison Square Garden on a Thursday night, and Jimmy Ken Palm had him as the number one defensive rated team in NCAA, and they have shown it up here tonight. Impressive. That's why it's all about the dedication of wanting to be first an individually great defensive player and the numbers speak for themselves and then collectively supporting mm -hmm. each other if one happens to get beat and that doesn't happen by accident it's the kind of players that you recruit that buy into that from day one and then it becomes contagious and again when you lose a key component of your line okay particular you have to figure out ways to win now until everybody catches up what well, defense keeps you in the fray a little bit and allows you to offset maybe some of what you miss from that outstanding young man points allowed just 57.8 third best in the nation opponent field goal percentage second best in the nation all of these defensive stats and it's a Rick Barnes staple and he's got Tennessee right where he wants them as Adu knocks down the free throws hits them both pushes that lead to eight 317 remaining. Plopchic big offensively early. He yeah. re enters with eight points on four of six shooting. Vescovy picks up Brian Greenlee. Fort Atlantic needs something. They need to find something offensively that they can hang their hat on right now. Golden sets a screen. And that's going to be a foul underneath. So battle inside between Julian Phillips. And Vlad Golden, Phillips called for the foul. Well, that action actually got the switch that got Phillips on Golden inside. And how about this? Up underneath, out of bounds, Vlad is <laughs> guarding the basketball to kind of take away an easy pass in. Six footer trying to pass one over a yeah. seven footer. Does it no problem. Greenlee just cannot shake Key. Key is it. Another great defender. Extra pass. Shot fake. Now the ball's popping. Here's Boyd for three. There you go, Florida Atlantic. That's what they needed. Good nice patience. possession. Yeah, good patience. You're able to move the ball east and west. You shift that defense two feet on the dribble penetration. Open shot. 37% of their offense comes from the three-point arc. Florida Atlantic. It's three for ten thus far. Key springs open. Missed it. Boyd with the board. Boyd. Gives it up, Greenlee. Weatherspoon. And now Martin, oh, little crossover into the corner. Again, got him in rotation. Three-pointer no good, offensive board. Elijah Martin. 
Got the big man on him, Plopchich. Martin going to work, trying to shake him. Plopchich moving his feet. Martin gives it up. Shot clock to four now. Plopchich taking on all the guards. What a defensive possession. But you know what, though? The thing I think Plopchik, Plopchik understands is that he had support behind him. So he stood his ground, didn't try to reach, used his length, gave enough space, but was able to contest. Missed that one, thought he was fouled. In transition, Tennessee gets back, though. Boyd. Martin. Shot fake again. Now Boyd's open. Missed another three. Three for 13 from beyond the arc, Florida Atlantic. Five point Tennessee lead. Timeout on the floor. 116 left in this first half. The real competition is on HGTV's door to door renovation war. Four teams tackle four identical houses on an all new Rock the Block Monday, 9 8 Central on HGTV. Kansas State. In a thriller over Michigan State in overtime, combined for 191 points, awaiting the winner of FAU in Tennessee as we send it over to Ali LaForce. Well, you're looking at Marquise Noel, who is a Kansas State star, but also a New York City star now that he put on that gigantic performance to lift them against Michigan State with 20 points and an NCAA record 19 assists. And as he came down in the stands to watch this matchup, he was mobbed by fans. I mean, he is a star in the making. Everybody wants selfies with him, pictures with him, autographs even, and security is having to get involved so he can just come down and watch this mm. game, you guys. Amazing. And had the steal at the end of the game that secured the win. Five steals in the game as well. One of the great performances in NCAA tournament history. With a player like that, you get to deal with some of the mistakes that he may make, knowing that the positives outweigh that which it did. You know, in late game situations when he had to make plays. Bobchich is going to work, comes up short, offensive rebound, Key. Another chance. Vescovy gives it right back. Key's going to let it fly, comes up short. FAU holds. It's a five point game. Know, Florida yeah. Atlantic's in there. Yeah, good little stop right there. See if you can kind of capitalize on this and get some momentum as you head into halftime. Pepper got your best half, but yet you're still right here. The ball's moving well, last few possessions. But the three-pointers are not falling for the Owls. Shot clock is off. We go under 20. Tennessee has not scored in the last three minutes and change. And they'll set up for the last one. That last game combined 191 points. We might not get to 100 with these two. Vescovy. Gets the switch. Vescovy shot fake, lets it fly. In and out. And did it go? Did it count? They are counting it on the floor. And they will take a look. Urosh Plavchic. What a first half. And for now, it is a good basket. No, no chance. No, no, no they'll chance. look at that and wipe it off. Plavchic gets an A for effort <laughs> right there. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Got the touch late, so it'll be a five-point game. As we go to the halftime locker room, Tennessee can be challenged offensively. They try to make it hard on their opponent, which they did. Coming up on AT&T at the half, first half analysis and an update on Gonzaga and UCLA right now on CBS. The latest NCAA tournament news coming your way. It's all coming up AT&T at the half. Got to have to go here in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, Sweet 16 matchup. Tennessee by five over FAU. First half statistics. The turnover story was a big one. FAU did not protect the ball well early, better late. And this is a very interesting ball game right now. Low scoring affair. Brian Anderson with Jim Jackson. Where do you go with this now if you're Tennessee? Some probably the rebounding side, they thought he was going to dominate a lot more, but this is a better rebounding team being smaller FAU than you think. So that's something I know Rick Barnes wants to talk about. But defensively in the first half, excellent in closing the gaps. And what I mean by that is here, as the ball comes off, gaps are going to be open within this defense, you think. But then as we roll the tape, because now you get over, you communicate, the ball has to be swung. Guess what? You want to drive once again, you're going to see a jersey. 
Gap is there, okay, close out. Now you're forced to take a long jump shot that's contested. Normally for FAU with that kind of movement, sometimes they yeah. can turn the corner, but when they were able to hit quick, that's when they've been able to get maybe two feet in the paint for a kick for an open shot. Seth Davis is all over it at the half. They're three-point shooting. They've had some open looks, but it has hurt them, FAU. Three for 14. In the first 12 minutes, Jimmy, they turned it over nine times. Tennessee took advantage of that, but they protected the ball well the last eight minutes. Zero turnovers, just six points in the last eight minutes from Tennessee, and it's 27-22 as we send it over to Allie LaForce. What'd you learn, Allie? Hey, Brian, I talked to Coach May. He said we focused only on the last seven minutes of play before the half. We didn't turn it over. We got big stops. Although the shots weren't falling, he loved the looks that they were getting. He did think they could utilize their shot fakes a little bit more. Defensively, he thought Plavich got a little bit too much space to work with, so close some of those angles up and those gaps. Other than that, they're ready to rock and roll. They have a sense of confidence knowing this team is 10-1 and one in games decided by five points or less. They're keeping that in their back pocket. Alec, great stuff. And you know why? It's because talking to Dustin, Coach Dustin May, worried about making shots. He said, listen, yeah. we're a team that goes on spurts. Yeah, good point. So despite the 3 for 14 shooting, they're only shooting 28% in the last two games in regards to three-point shots. But as much as they can miss three, four, five in a row, they can spurt and make four or five six in a row and that's what they lean heavily on yeah i like that answer we asked him about getting off to a good start he goes well, we're not worried about that we're going to have spurts whether we get off to a good start yep. or not we'll see florida atlantic has the ball start this second half a trip to the elite eight is on the line kansas state beat michigan state in our first game this is the guy they want to get going john l davis he's had some big second halves already in his first two ncaa tournament games just two points in half number one he opens up the scoring here in half number two and, and i like it because it got him going to his left hand and it set up a jump shot he was able to get two feet in the paint and didn't score a layup that's could be buries a three could answer on the other end that's if he gets it up so quick and his movement off the ball is what creates the space needed once he's able to catch, set, and shoot. Candace made the point about the rebounding. It's hard to believe FAU out-rebounded the much larger Tennessee Volunteers. Plus five in the rebounding category right now. Tennessee does have one more offensive board. Elijah Martin with sidestep three. No good. And an offensive rebound. Nick Boyd coming in there with the board. You can see the athleticism, though, in these guards yes. for FAU. They've got bounce, and they are in incredible condition. Golden finishes. First bucket of the game for Vlad Golden. 7-1 sophomore. He transferred from Texas Tech. Well, FAU's comp set in their conference, UAB, a little bit bigger, stronger. They out-rebounded them in two games right. plus one. 75-76-75. So to rebound against a bigger team is something that they've had to fight against and battle against before. To rebound, you got to put a body on someone. Right. And to put a body on these guys is a challenge because right. they are in Different motion. Different bodies. <laughs> Different <laughs> bodies at Tennessee, too. Turnover. Martin throws it right into the hands of Meshack. He's got great hands. By the way, you see how chill Candace was in that first half? She's chill. You know why she's chill? Because the Tennessee women have eight national championships, and she's got two of them. And she sure. got the first dunk, I think, right? That's right. And so that's she's a, chill. She's chill. Be a little different story in the second half. Plopchich dropping bodies. It goes the other way. Offensive foul. And a lot of times when you want to play physical and you're used to initiating contact, this is when you pick up an offensive foul. And I don't think Plopchik in that particular situation had to lower the shoulder. He was so deep. If he takes one power dribble, uses his hips, that jump hook is still going to be available. Those two having a laugh, those two seven-footers, Golden and Plopchich. Here's Greenlee now. He's got Vescovy on him. John L. Davis picked up by James. Davis, who he slipped, missed it. Rebound James. That was a clear-out play for him with the shooter in the corner to get to his left hand. But unfortunately, when he tried to jump stop, lost his footing. Up it inside once again. Roche Plopchic backs down. Golden misses. That was working early for Tennessee. 
Offense hard to come by, and then you're, you're missing your point guards. Kai Ziegler, huge loss late in the season. ACL injury against Arkansas in the regular season, last home game. Not a lot of room to work for Nick Boyd. But doesn't this play into Tennessee's hands as far as offense hard to come by? Oh, you can do that. Vescovy <laughs> hits his second three of the half. They're accustomed to playing the grind it out kind of games. I had them against Maryland here earlier in the year, and they just figure out ways to grind you out. The question is, can FAU be disciplined enough to stay with it throughout those little droughts they have? Davis got the big man on him. He's just going to let a three fly settle for one. Well, you got a seven footer on you. Another chance, and that one rains in. Boyd buries the three. Nick Boyd, he's got a couple of threes in this one. He has half of FAU's three pointers. Four point game. It feels like Tennessee should be up 10, but they're not. Tom Boyd, right now, has an opportunity. He's been very quiet. Well, Santiago Pescovi, if you're late, you're going to pay for it. But boy, not to be outdone. It's a timeout, but let's tell you something. It's a seven-point lead, but it feels a lot closer than that right now. This Week 16 continues tomorrow. Doubleheaders on CBS and TBS. And it all starts with the Nissan NCAA tip-off show, 5.30 p.m. on TBS. No number ones on this day. But there will be two of the four number ones remaining in action tomorrow. Golden will sit. We're at the 15:49 mark. Nearly five minutes into the second half, Lord Atlantic, despite poor shooting from three-point range, are hanging in there. Easy bucket for Tennessee coming out of the timeout. Yeah, tough. You're down four, then you give up that easy one underneath, out of bounds. Those are like special teams plays, so to speak, that you can get. Excellent offense at time by Tennessee. The great Greenlee. response, Greenlee, able to get some of that loose change right back that they gave up. Rosado's on the floor now for Florida Atlantic. He's a playmaker, even though he's a big man. Yeah, comes in to match up with Adu. Figure so. Olivier Kamala has got to become a factor at some point. And they secure him off. John L. Davis with the rebound. It's a three-point game, a chance to tie it here for Florida Atlantic. Come on, defending Greenlee. Rosado, the quarterback. Davis trying to turn the corner. James hit the deck, and that'll be the Owls' ball here. 11 to shoot. Well, watch James right at the end. Even though he slips, he's able to reach down and get. Mm. Now he got some hand yes. on that one. He he got away with that one. Looked like he was trying to draw a foul first. Yeah. And then maybe given one, so a couple of no calls, and they play on, and now that's going to be a foul on Tyreek Key. And that's what you do against pressure. You want to drive pressure, but it's not initially one-on-one. -on -one. It's when the ball is swung, then you can attack that pressure. One-on-one, -on -one, when this defense is set, the gaps are limited. But if you can move it, now you can attack that pressure off the dribble. Hopefully, even get to the line, get to the layup, or attract some defense and you can kick it out. Two for two here. James Kama will sit. Meshack back on the floor for his defense, and maybe Rick Barnes taking a chance at Julian Phillips, the freshman, can get it going offensively. Has the ability. Greenlee able to secure it, guarded by Vescovy, and now with six to shoot. Gaffney trying to dribble himself free. Going to have to take a tough shot. Does so. Missed everything. And that's going to be a turnover. So Vescovy having to handle the ball here. That's such a huge story for Tennessee. Without their point guard Ziegler, they really don't have that ball handle. They prefer Vescovy yeah. to play off the ball, yep. but he's their most sound ball handler at this point. What, what happens is it puts players in different positions, but also the offense that you can run. It's different when Vescovy runs it from Blair to Ziegler. It's a different concept to it, an operation, and you don't get the same actions that you would get and you don't get the same pace and push that you would get hence you take away some of those easier opportunities 
because you don't have that particular player in your lineup. Strong rejection by Adu on the other end. Tennessee trying to turn it into points. Vescovi closed down quick. Vescovi runs into a wall. Skip pass across. And the three pointer no good. Adu just going up top on the little guys. Too small, says Plavcic. Adu now with six points. I swear he made that same play <laughs> and rebound in the first half. And I think that was over Greenlee, too, at the same time. There's a swarm of mice in the house right there, Jimmy. The Mises. That was easy for Adu. He got a block. He got an offensive board to put back. Davis is fouled. And free throws coming. But hear that slap. Jonas Adu, Jim, 6'11", with a massive wingspan. And that time, <laughs> that's Jalen Gaffney inside trying to do all he can to keep Adu off the glass. And when the shot goes up, big fella. Understands his role. Seven, five and a half wingspan. Say that again. Seven, <laughs> five point five. They measure it all the way out. That's six eleven. Free throws here for John L. Davis. Still looking for his first three of the game. Hey, tune in to Inside March Madness. You can check out the play of the day presented by Buick Encore GX. I don't know which play they're going to choose, but it. Better come, Better from, come uh, from Noel. Marquise Noel of Kansas State, who just put on a show today. Yeah. Mr. New York City, the Kansas State diminutive point guard, 20 points, 19 assists, five steals, and a Kansas State win over Michigan State. One of the great games I've ever seen in my time covering this tournament. Well, it came down to the little things, late stretch of the game. Michigan State missed some free throws, left it on that alley oop to Keontae Johnson in the critical moments of that game this game's got a totally different feel but just as close it could be a dramatic finish as well as we go under the 12 minute mark Meshach trying to create Meshach hangs and finishes strong move by Jemai Meshach and that's an offensive foul Florida Atlantic too firm on the screen, and it's going the other way. Tennessee ball. Well, Jemiah Meshack able to go left and then finish. This young man has been through so much in his life, personally. Ups and downs last year as a freshman of playing this year, but yet never deterred his spirit. Mother and father so proud. Mika's a sports psychologist and life coach probably keeps his mentals right. Mm -hmm. No question. Dad Elton, the firefighter, he's tough, right? And he plays with quiet reserve, confident reserve. A little turnaround comes up short. Forrest dumps it down inside. Golden against Adu. Turnaround jump hook short. Golden hits the deck. He falls down a lot. Here is Davis on offensive board. And a score for Florida Atlantic. Seven points for Janelle Davis. Five of those coming in the second half. And how about nine offensive rebounds to eight for FAU? Davis, in the first two games of this tournament, took over in the last five minutes. Both of their victories. Key rises up. No good. Cold in the board. Florida Atlantic down four with a basketball. It'll be a foul on Key. Timeout on the floor. John L. Davis starting to come alive here, Jimmy. Well, if you're not making threes, you have to figure out another way to be effective. This time, the offensive rebound, then the putback. Trying to keep your eye on the game? Just tell Siri. Read my last text. 11 and a half to go on the regulation here. It's a rock fight. Tennessee up four over Florida Atlantic. Four seed out of the SEC, the Volunteers. FAU at a Conference USA, their last year in Conference USA. Five for 18 from three, one of the better three-point shooting teams in this tournament. They make a few. Tennessee, you can almost feel those shoes tightening a little bit. I told you, under 10 minutes. 
lower seeded team starts to feel a little bit of that pressure. You know, another miss three. This time from Forrest. So it is Vescovy who handles the ball. Meshek had a few possessions. It's always interesting to see who Rick Barnes goes with. Key. They clear it out. Back at his man down. He's got some of that game. Comes up short with an air ball and a fight for it who touch it last. Officials look at each other. That'll be Tennessee basketball. Tend to shoot. Well, even when Vescovy initiates the offense, he'll give it up and go do some weak side action to try to get himself back involved, you know, in the play with three-point shot off the ball. Vescovy trying to get a quick one up. FAU guards it well. Five to shoot. Mayshack took a peek. Got to go. Pulls a three. Mayshack back iron. Key keeps it alive and right into the hands of FAU and Brandon Weatherspoon. Some tension right now in this possession. You can feel it with the volunteer fans in the stands. Looking up top. Golden catch. Ball movement. Up time here. Tennessee closing out well. Open three is good. Finally, FAU gets one to fall. Michael Forrest knocks it down. FAU as close as they've been since they trailed 7-6. James passed it up. Vescovy, long three, contested. And Golden with a rebound, and he's fouled. Worm is turning a little bit. Does Tennessee have an answer? Well, watch this. The scramble was great, but then right here, Vescovy and also James going after the dog, which leads Michael Forrest open in the corner. A little miscommunication. AT&T 5G taking us above the rim. One of the best plays of the night and most timely plays for FAU. FAU's only lead was 3-2. to two. Tennessee had a nine-point lead. Florida Atlantic a chance to take the lead, and it's going to be Forrest again. Cash money from Michael Forrest. The Owls are in front. First time since the early stages of this game. It's an 8-0 run. Nine and a half to go. Tennessee desperate for an answer now. Up there, chop the arm. Drop the shoulder. Golden takes the charge. Adu turns it over. And I think this is a 2-3 zone. Tennessee employed. And it's for us once again to be able to knock it in. Good patience, good ball movement. And I'll talk about the physical play. This time it's Adu trying to get inside. A little acting by Golden, but it worked on the baseline, able to pick it up. Point guard, Nick Boyd, cut off. Forrest again, got a little shake in his game. Forrest, oh, here it comes. Coming off the bench, Michael Forrest, the Florida native, the senior in his final year. Adu, he'll take the mid-range jumper. Good looking stroke from the big man. Tennessee needed that one in a big way. Adu's got eight. Forrest has scored the last eight for Florida Atlantic. Going to be a foul on the Volunteers. Adu. Jonas Adu picks up his fourth foul, Jimmy. That's tough, too, right there. I mean, in position. John L. Dave was able to initiate a little bit of contact. Down there in the single bonus for FAU, who shoots it from the free throw line at 71%. Well, they've got a lot of time left in this game for free throws in the bonus already with 8.43 left. Well, you know Davis. What that means. Drive the ball. Drive the ball, Brad. Yeah. Drive the ball. And they've been doing that. Yep. Play NCAA March Madness men's tournament run. Pick five teams. You can make trades after every game. Compete with friends to get the most points. And you start your entry now at play.ncaa.com. Davis hits two free throws. He'll get a rest. He won't be down there long. 
No, he'll get the timeout plus the break right now. So that'll probably be the last time he'll exit the game other than the under four timeout. So really good use of time to get John L. Davis some rest knowing that you're going to need him down the stretch of the game. Tennessee needing an answer. Blockchick being hounded oh. by Weatherspoon. Blockchick looking for room. No, Golden with a block. FAU ball. Beautiful defense by Golden that time. Didn't back down. But also, it was some help on the dig inside. And that was Witherspoon who kind of was a deterrent to a clean look. Oh, yeah. Talk about defense. He said, man, uh, we can play some defense as well. FAU. Brandon Weatherspoon gave him some good minutes in the first half. Coming up big here. Third turnover this half. Ooh, almost one from Boyd. So you see that athleticism though on plays like that. Like they can get themselves out of some jams. Forrest kicks it to the corner. Three-pointer too strong. Elijah Martin had him laced up. Under eight minutes to go. Tennessee down four. That's going to be trying to get loose. Martin is with him step for step. Nashek, here's Vescovy now in the corner. Contested three is short. And give Elijah Martin a lot of credit. He's running the break now. Weatherspoon with a shot fake. Martin, three-pointer. Down! Rick Barnes needs a timeout. They are jumping at Madison Square Garden. Florida Atlantic by seven on a 15-2 run. Boy, what a different a half makes for FAU in the first half. It was three, four, three for 14 from behind the three, couldn't find it. But in the second half, you stay with it. You feel good about yourself. You make the passes. You step up with confidence. As a result, now you're five for nine. You have a seven-point lead. You put the pressure on Tennessee to have to respond. Four different players accounting for those five made threes. Look at that, 357 three-pointers made. That was top six. In all of college basketball, 37% of their points coming from beyond the arc of their field goal attempts. And officials are taking a look at, at this here. Bottom of the screen, Plopchic just kind of sending Golden out. Golden trying to sell it. Officials, they're having a long conference. What was two here. things going on? I mean, you had Meshack underneath right here. With the block out and then and the root out. With the root out, but that's yeah. not as much as what you're seeing with the elbow, I think, from Plavich and Golden. So AJ Desai, Brian Dorsey, Larry Scarotto. All right, thanks to Larry Scarotto. Go ahead. It will be a flagrant foul on Plavich inside mm -hmm. with the elbow. So, Black look, Golden will go to the line and shoot two, and they will retain FAU possession. Here's the elbow coming in right there. But he got him below. I can't see from that angle. Gene Steratore is with us, yes. our rules expert. Go ahead, Gene. Talk us through that one. Well, I didn't see. I didn't see an awful lot on the elbow. Right. To me, it felt like they got tied up a little bit right here. Now, at that point, then 33. I think you've got a common foul feel there with yeah. him discarding. But I also think 50 is embellishing that contact a little bit. I really didn't see something that looked like it really rose to the level of excessive to me. Uh, that's just my opinion on the play, guys. That's how I felt about no, it. I'm right with you, Gene. I'm with you. I, I didn't see an elbow or anything. Like, I saw two. Young men going after the ball, being physical, one more than the other, resulting to me in a common foul. It's unfortunate that it's this, and you know what they say. Mm. Rasheed Wallace. Ball don't lie. So that's on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, though. I think, and Golden does that. Like, he, he's, he's he embellished a few. He's gotten a few calls to his credit. Hey, that's down it. the second one, so. The theater district is right down the street, yeah. right? We're okay. here, Broadway. Sell it. If you can get the foul, Get it, especially with the reputation of Tennessee that they brought yes. in as being a hard-nosed defensive team. Sometimes you get those calls, and this time it went the way of FAU. 
Two shots in the ball here after the flagrant on Plopchic. That'll be FAU ball again. And that's going to take us to a timeout. FAU come to play here in the second half. Couldn't buy one in the first half. They're for real. Out of Conference USA, the Owls are hooting it up at Madison Square Garden. Brian, Jim, Allen. All right, Greg, thank you. Looks like a good one there in Vegas. UConn advancing. They took down Arkansas. Razorbacks ride is done. SEC with Tennessee, Alabama, and Arkansas. The last three left, just two now. So Golden able to draw the foul. Plopchich with the F1. And uh, we got an explanation from A.J. Desai. And we're, we are searching for what the officials told us was the play they looked at. And it was not on this end with the rebound. It was actually on an offensive possession by FAU when Plopchic threw the elbow. We'll search it out. We'll show it to you when we find it. That was not what we originally told. So that'll be interesting. Here's Weatherspoon now. He lets a three fly. No good. And Golden there with the offensive rebound. Ten offensive boards for FAU. Golden's got two of those. Another chance as we go under seven minutes. Forrest hits the backboard. Another offensive board. Weatherspoon puts it in. FAU, Jimmy, plus 10 on the boards right now. When you play scramble defense like Tennessee has done in the second half, and Com Comboy inside, you open yourself to offensive rebounds, and I think we found yep. the play right here with the flagrant foul. This is right what there. they looked at. Okay, so that's, that's legit. That's and, an F1. And they couldn't go back to look at it until it was a dead ball. So that's why on that play, they went back and reviewed it because the ball was there. Good job by the tape room finding yes. that. And we appreciate the explanation. It came a little late, but we got it correct. Well, we were right about the embellishment. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just didn't know that was, wasn't the play they're exactly. talking about. Combo misses a three. James offensive board. Tennessee gets another chance. Volunteers got to get Combo going here. He's been quiet tonight. 0 for 5. Does have three assists, but hasn't scored. A hey, dude. Wow. Buries that mid-range jumper. What the stroke, B.A. Big two big-time shots for Tennessee to be able to hit that. He's playing with four fouls. Under six minutes. Boy, quick release. And he knocks it in high off the window with the layup. Quickness. Now they've figured out the rhythm. It took them a half to figure out the rhythm of this game and how to kind of get inside this tough defense and Adu once again missed it. And that's going to be Tennessee ball. Foul on Florida Atlantic. Well, the run here, Jimmy, significant. 20 to 4. It covers six and a half minutes. Spurtability. The spurt. That's exactly I mean, but exactly what you, that's you what, said. That's what Dustin May said. He said, listen, I don't worry about it because I know I know my squad. We'll figure it out early or late of how to be able to knock in consecutive shots. And they've been getting some shots from the defense. Oh, man. Set there. Needed it. Kama needed yes. that one. Yes. Olivier Kama with his first made basket of the game. Kama went for 27 against Duke. Knocked down three threes. Approaching the five-minute mark. Florida Atlantic, the nine seed. Forrest gives it up. Martin with seven to shoot now. Martin. James right with a tough shot off the rim. do with a rebound. Tennessee trying to get on a run. Mayshack at the controls. Keep an eye on Vescovy. He wanted it. Dump it down to Mayshack. And he's in the crowd. Mayshack ah! off the window. Mayshack lost his shoe. But that was a result of Olivier Kwamwa, Kwamwa inside, attracted the defense, kicked it back out, and immediately Mayshack went back off the dribble and attacked the rim. The number one rated defensive team in the country, Tennessee, down six. 
desperate for a stop. And it's going to be a foul on Olivier Kamois. No shot. No basket. Free throws coming. Yeah, Kamois right there, not able to get that right foot down towards the baseline more and smart play by John L. Davis to rip it through, read the feet of Kamwa and attack that right foot to pick up the foul. Changes here. Golden will sit. Rosado on the floor. One and one for John L. Davis. He's got nine. Seven of those coming in the second half. Make it eight. Gives him 10 points, double figures for Davis. TNT and TBS, your home for the intense action packed Stanley Cup playoffs. It begins April 18th on TBS. Don't miss a minute of the action. Clutch free throws from Davis. Stretches that Florida Atlantic lead back to eight. Meshack gets a step on Gaffney. Meshack can't finish it, but he's fouled. He's fearless right now. You gotta love that if you're Rick Barnes. He's out of position running the point guard, but he's going right at Florida Atlantic. Well, but he understood too where the gap was at. And he went right away. He recognized that the left hand drive was available, that it was some vacant space within the key. And once again took advantage. This time got fouled, got it to the free throw line. First free throws of the half for Tennessee and Nashak. Comes up empty. 60% free throw shooter during the regular season. Meshack started the last 10 games. The supreme defender now trying to score. And he missed both free throws. Missed opportunity for the Volunteers. They missed half of their foul shots in this one. FAU can push it to a double digit lead. Davis and a turnover. Meshack got the strip, secures it. There's those great hands. Jemai Meshack gives him a chance. It's going to be James who will handle right now. Ooh, almost a steal. Vescovy gives it up. James steps into a three pointer. And it's good. Big shot for Tennessee. Josiah Jordan James into double figures with 10. It's a five point game. That was a big swing. Big Instead of going swing. up double figures, now it's a two possession game. Timeout. Dusty May wants to talk it over. Screws are tightening here at Madison Square Garden. The man's got Jordan and James in his name. He's built for it. Coach. Candace Parker, Seth Davis. They'll have all the highlights and analysis inside March Madness, presented by Buick only on TBS. Somebody get a camera on Candace right now. Record everything. <laughs> Five point game. Seven minutes into the second half, Tennessee pushed their lead to six. Al in Houston. Big Al, he's nervous. Got some moments here, didn't he, at MSG? Here's Greenlee with a basketball. Eight to shoot now. Getting late clock again. Boyd finds Davis. Best defender on him. Davis pulls it. Can't hit it. And a bouncing rebound to Jemai Meshack. FAU went on an 18-2 run. They took a double-digit lead. 51-41. And now it's five. And Tennessee trying to cut into it. James. Shot fake, now he fires. Air ball, offensive board, Misha. Here's Vescovy now for three. No! Davis comes out of the pack. Boyd running up ahead. Boyd to the rack. He lays it in! Three possession game. Misha. Davis pokes it free. Almost a turnover. They do take it on Golden, and that's going to be a foul on Golden. Tried to draw one. It'll be baseline out of bounds. But the long shot, the heads-up play by Davis.
is able to hit a streaking Nick Boyd. But again, in that in situation, the opposite guard from Vescovy has to get back. Yeah. And you need some support. That time, no one it was a, basically a two-on-one, almost a three-on-one for FAU, and they were able to convert critical possession that time defensively and offensively. Next FAU foul will put Tennessee to the line for a one and one. Trying to find who? Kamwa right there. Got a little mismatch. See if he can take advantage of it. Kamwa turns, shoots. No! And it's Boyd with a rebound. FAU starting to sense it right now. They lead by seven. Ball control here. A massive second half run. Florida Atlantic. Davis. In control now. Vescovy on him. Davis shot fake. And that's going to be a foul on Vescovy. Free throws coming. John L. Davis. B.A., I tell you what, for a sophomore to have the patience, the awareness, the little attributes in order not to kind of let the game speed him up. John L. Davis has shown that it's particular in that situation by being patient on the post. Conference USA six man of the year Put him back in the starting lineup down the stretch of the season and into the tournament play first team all conference USA He's had a big second half here ten points make 11 points in the second half Florida Atlantic by nine 137 remaining in regulation desperation time for Tennessee Turning up a lot of clock here. Vescovy, nothing there. Elijah Martin has been a star defensively guarding Vescovy. And that's going to be a foul on Davis. That'll be free throws. One and one coming up for Tennessee. Mm, Tennessee. Remember, they went the last eight minutes of the first half scoring just six points. Just 27. On the board of that first half, they, they led by five. You got to give credit to this FAU defense in regards to them locking in, getting stops when they needed. And I mentioned to you about Tennessee and teams that play Virginia, mm -hmm. that struggle sometimes offensively. They can win a lot of games defensively, but sometimes not being able to have that consistent offensive flow will come back to haunt you again. It's still a minute 21 left, a lot of time left, but. This FAU team is not going anywhere. Full court pressure here from the Volunteers. FAU beat Florida earlier this year. That's when they knew they had something special going. Greenlee, patient. Plenty of time here. Dusty May used to work for Mike Davis at Indiana, the Detroit Mercy head coach. He asked Davis to speak to the Owls after a game. Hit and out it goes. Offensive rebound. John L. Davis. And now the fouls come. And FAU. They got a lead eight on their mind. Jimmy, Mike Davis met with the Owls of FAU. And he told them, you guys are a top five team in the country. If you believe that, you can beat anybody. And they are 50 seconds from a trip to the Elite Eight. The belief, the work, the time. You put yourself in a situation where you can compete and you say, well, how do they compete on the offensive glass? Well, because they keep you spread out. And when the shot goes up because you're in scramble mode, you can't put a body on someone. And that has worked well for the Owls, in particular in the second half, to be able to gobble up and create altern I mean, alternate possessions in regards to having more so than Tennessee. Two clutch free throws for Davis. 15 points now. The lead is nine. Tennessee got to get one up quick. And then a foul. Meshek will be headed back to the line. Remember, he just missed a, a couple of free throws. Mike Davis did have a caveat that uh, we were told in that discussion from Dusty May said, top five team, but you got to turn off the outside noise. Yep. You can't get selfish. 
And some of the players told Coach May, he goes, I felt like he was speaking right to me. Getting a lot of advice and counsel from people you trust, but when you're in the bunker with your team, things change. And it says a lot about the maturity of the young men because I talked about kind of the youth that is leading the charge for this Owls team and for them to be able to absorb that and really truly understand what that meant says a lot about the character of this team. And oh, wow. that tip back oh, right foul. there. Cobble. Yes. Big play right there. That makes it a six point game, two possession game. And this is the part, a beautiful move by mm. Kamwa right there to go around Golden, faked them on the inside and went around the back and was able to tip it in. It, again, it's only a two possession game. And now, officials checking the clock here. Uh huh. 43 6 is on the clock right now. Well, Florida Atlantic, they make the free throws and punch their ticket. Fouls are coming quick here. Davis. 13 second half points. FAU has two timeouts remaining. How about this? This yeah. is what they like to use. Five men across the out of bounds line to kind of confuse the defense to see if they can get it in easier. Utilize all yep. that speed. There Green it is. Gets it easy. Just out running Mayshack. And the Ooh. foul comes. That was close. But right now, Tennessee needs that foul to get him to the line to have a chance. Five across, spread offense. Draw it up in the playground, right in the sand, and say, you go here, you go here, you cross here. I'll get you the ball. Brian Greenlee on the line for FAU. Shooting two. Brian Greenlee. Big free throws for him. He missed the first, still a two-possession game. Greenlee, 64% free throw shooter. Rebounding enters. Vlad Golden. Greenlee, an excellent defender. He and Elijah Martin have done a brilliant job guarding the perimeter. That's a big free throw right there. Three possession game now. Tennessee down seven. Got to go quick. Mayshek can't turn the corner. Runs into a double team. Needs help. Escobi sidestep three. No good. Cobble another rebound. James, no good. Clock ticks. Into the backcourt it goes. Dusty Mason, no fouls. Shot clock is off. FAU starting to sense it right now. Another one misses. The Owls are going to be moving on. Tennessee ball. 4.8 seconds left. They're going to take a look at it. It's only going to add to the drama here as FAU poised to advance right into your living room. Best could be on the back end of this. And it, but it goes off. Oh, but it it goes off of boy, but then it goes back off of Vescovy's foot. But was his foot out of bounds when it went off? You want to get it right? It's moot at well, this point. Well, I know. But yep, it's, he's standing out of bounds. So he well, the, right there, it's off of yeah, boy, and, he, and he's out of bounds. And it's out of bounds right there. So, so they want to look over here at us. We could we could tell them right just now. Go ahead, let them know. Yeah. Cutting it to my cigar time a little bit. <laughs> Tennessee, a major knockout of Duke in the second round. One of the great defensive teams in the country, but they couldn't pull away in the first half, even with Florida Atlantic shooting so poorly. And Tennessee is going to take a sweet 16 exit here. Yeah, so they're taking another look again. I thought Boyd's toe was out of bounds when he touched it. Yeah, Tennessee ball. So Tennessee ball here. By the way, a little side note in this game that's very interesting. The two ADs of these universities are brothers. 
Danny White at Tennessee, Brian White at Florida Atlantic, and of course their father, Kevin White, longtime athletic director at Duke. But Brian and the Owls are the ones heading to the Elite Eight. That is the ball game. The Owls alive and well. They win it 62-55, and Florida Atlantic is Elite Eight bound. They're knocking off all the first times. First NCAA tournament win, first NCAA tournament Sweet 16 appearance, and now three straight victories to get them a date with Kansas State. In the regional final and a trip to the final four on the line. Impressive performance by Florida Atlantic, Jimmy. And, and what it showed was that, yes, Florida Atlantic wants to get up and down. They want to run. They want to shoot threes. But it also showed a level of toughness and stick when shots weren't falling. They always kept it in the balance. And so when they made the spurt, they were able to overcome the lack of shooting. And I mentioned this, Brian, under 10 minutes, the game was still four or five points towards Tennessee. The pressure began to shift that way. And guard play for Florida Atlantic to me was the difference. They were able to spread out the defense and get some offensive rebounds and finish the game. No team in college basketball has won 34 games except FAU. Houston could get there tomorrow, but right now FAU stands alone with 34 wins as we send it to Allie LaForce. Congratulations, you two. Coach, I'll start with you. A program that hasn't been to the tournament since 2002. How does it feel to be going to the Elite Eight, Coach? Well, it feels great to go to battle with these guys every day. A lot of people don't realize this is a program that hasn't stumbled along the way this year. There hasn't been ups and downs. What have you known about this team that the whole rest of the country is just finding out? They love to compete, they love the game, and they love each other. What do you remember about recruiting this guy sitting in the stands with his family? It took me 15 minutes of an open gym his junior year to say, I want him. I love it, Coach. When you see him get emotional talking about you, what does it make you think, Janelle? He said, well, I hear you. When you see Coach getting emotional talking about you, what does that make you think? It made me think I'm, I'm a great player. That's all, I, that's all I think. Have you thought about your mom and everything she sacrificed for you to be here today, and what would you like to say to her? I'm always thinking about my people, man. I just say I just want to say I love them. And we're gonna be we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good one day. Enjoy it with your teammates. Thank you. We'll see you Saturday.